Let's do day two. Red nose to reports. Uh, we have this five levels, six reports per row. We need to find reports that are safe. The levels need to be increasing or decreasing. And the difference between neighbors is at least one at most three. So this is increasing and we check differences. Analyze the unusual, how many reports are safe? Can I paste so 1000 reports in each of them? Just read a line until in Python it would be easier. Should I do it in Python? Oh, that, that's okay, I will do it here. Right, um, repeat 1000 times. Let me not hide it behind the uh, behind my face. Repeat that many times. I want to read numbers until end of file or end of line. Maybe this will work. Uh, while true. Read X. Now read a character. If this is end of line, then break. And what do we do here? I add it to some vector and then we will bother after reading, I want to bother with actually doing the checks. Push back X. All right. Now create a variable for the size for convenience. I want to iterate only up to K minus one. So I don't touch the last element because here I will look at the difference of next element minus this one. And I, the difference should be between one and three. So if uh, one smaller equal absolute value of the difference, and then let's maybe increase this. And absolute value of the difference is smaller equal three. This is good. If now the opposite of that, then this is not good. Okay is false. We can also break, but doesn't affect really the time complexity in the worst case scenario. If you want to break in this place, sure. So we have this and we also need to guarantee that it's only increasing or only decreasing. Uh, let's have also a Boolean flag for only increasing and only decreasing is by default true. If I see that this is not the case, then I will change it to false. If difference is greater than zero, uh, th it means increasing. So only decreasing is false. In this case, if the difference is negative, it's not increasing. If you're confused by doing that in a single for loop, it might make sense to just do two separate for loops. In one, check one thing, in the other, check the other thing. And now if this is okay and it's only increasing or only decreasing, then answer plus plus, at the end, print the answer. Of course, answer should start from a zero. And character, not a string. Zero to on in, four, eight, six. That's roughly random. It suggests that the data was generated by always getting a random value, true or false, and then generating either a good thing or a bad thing accordingly. Part two. We want to tolerate a single bad level. And what does it mean? If removing a single level from an unsafe report would make it safe, the report instead counts as safe. All right. A similar but harder problem would be what if we can swap to different places. Now, but time, let's for the first time this month talk about time complexity. Right now, what we have is all of number of test cases. Let's call this T, assuming that this is the T value. Uh, maybe I will make a new uh, file. How did I call it last time? 
compared to CPP. Okay, so the time complexity, if we say that this is the number of test cases, the T, is O of T times the length. You can also say that this is the the time complexity is equal to the av sum of average lengths. Or But okay, this is the time complexity. Now, if I try removing every element, then what I will get is for each of test cases, if I iterate which element to remove and then verify if the rest is okay, I would get len squared. And that's the easiest solution here. But let's, so this is, if we try removing every element, every element, and for each of them separately iterate everything else, but it's a lot of repeated work. Let's aim at uh, number of test cases times just length. So the time complexity will be as good as the part one. How can we achieve that? If we keep going and we see that everything is okay, then we don't need to do anything. But once we see that something is wrong, we know that one of those elements needs to be removed. That's one possibility. So only we will have just few possibilities of what to remove. Create a function that something is okay. The function will just do this, whatever I did in the easy version. At the end, we return whether this is true. In particular, this is nice because it's already tested. It already works. So I have a function. Oh, but how do I uh, know here which element is bad? That seems to be a copy paste. Huh. Well, then there will be some, some repetitions. Okay, I have an idea. I, I think I have a nice idea. Still here, I need this. For every mm, element, I will figure out in a moment the size of the for loop. I will check if this difference is bad, uh, which is, well, that's still a copy paste. How do you really do it nicely? Let's stop for a minute and think. My plan was now to here say that the uh, if the difference is greater than three or equal to zero, then one of those two elements need to be removed. If not, then I need to check if it's not consistently monotonic. Well, okay, it, it, it will be some copy paste. We look at this difference. If this thing is smaller than one or it's greater than three, then we know that one of those two elements needs to be removed. So I will say consider removing position i, consider removing position i plus one, and then break. Only those two make sense. Because of this break, the time complexity will be good. It's actually here a very important break. Another thing is that uh, if i plus one is plus two is smaller than k, so if this also fits, then I will say that there is also the next difference, which is that, and I want to check if those two have different signs. If one of them is increasing, the other is decreasing. If diff greater than zero is different than diff two greater than zero, then I know one of those three elements need to be erased. It's like a pyramid shape, let's say, or a valley. It's not monotonic. So I will say consider i, consider i plus one and i plus two, because th like it's like we're seeing elements five, ten, eight, or we are seeing elements maybe ten, five, eight. It's not increasing. It's not decreasing. One of those three needs to go. I don't know which one, yeah, but that should be enough. And then. Also, I will consider erasing just the zero element because maybe that's enough. Now, what does it mean for me to consider erasing an element? Consider. We are getting, I keep using i while it's here. And then I will do some ugly hack. This is equivalent to saying repeat t times. 
how we consider removing element i is I will make a copy of vector a, I will erase the i-th element, and now if is ok of b, then some boolean flag I, will, I need to change to true. I don't want to do this here, because if I do it like that, then two cons considering removing one element and then the other can both cause answer to increase. That's, that would be incorrect. Instead, any OK is false. Here I will say any OK is true. Uh, so we have this, and then once all of that is done, uh, if any OK, then answer plus plus. And let me zoom back. What is the end of that? Oh, yeah, uh, we have here the reading the one line. So everything here should be after I'm done reading. Done. I'm not safe. I'm not sure about it. So I'm going to maybe copy this first to sample, run 0 to part 2 on the sample, ignore that, 998, <laughs> well it shouldn't be, oh yeah, because I hard coded 1000, please 6 things, generally this should be a reading till new line, not this thing, 4, uh, th this is something wrong with my C++ compiler, now it said that it's 4, which is correct, okay, then run it for the input, <laughs> change it back here, yeah, that, that's what you get for hard coding data. 540, is that correct? Answer is right. Let me summarize what uh, I'm doing and why the time complexity is okay. I have a function that is just copy pasted from the previous version, from the part one. Verifies in linear time uh, whether the sequence is good. Then 1000 times I repeat reading, just like in the previous version, and then this, which turned out to be quite long code. I'm surprised by 75 lines now. I wonder how simple you can make it. Uh, and what do you do? You create a function that considers erasing the if element. And I'm going to run this function around three times, or maybe at most four times, not more. And how do I achieve that? I consider erasing just any element to check something. It doesn't make sense not to remove an element as well you can remove, uh, unless the sequence was empty. For every two consecutive elements, you look at the difference. If the difference is not between one and three, then you know you need to erase one of those two elements. So you consider both options and then you break. Th those two breaks are important for time complexity because they guarantee that consider function will not be run n times or k times, it will be run only two times here and maybe third time here. Or if this, this didn't happen, then maybe here three times and the fourth time for considering zero. Uh, this can be also removed if we know that one of those things was checked. Then if three consecutive elements exist, so if the i exists, i plus 1 exists, and i plus 2 is also inside the bounds, then you look at the next difference. You have div, you have div2. If they have two different signs, so one of them is positive, the other negative, or the other way around, then you check, you, you say, those three values are not increasing or decreasing, so you need to erase one of them. After considering those three options, you break. You don't continue with the for loop. Maybe there are some other issues in the future, but in particular, you need to erase one of those three and you're not allowed to erase more. Then, uh, then at the end, if at least one of the considers checked, uh, checked that the sequence is good, then it marks the flag any OK as true, and then we increase the answer by one. The total time complexity per test case is just all of length of the sequence, times four, but we ignore constant factors uh, in time complexity. Uh, the, some similar problems are that you can swap two elements and you want to achieve an increasing sequence and the solution is similar where you see an issue and you know that something here needs to be swapped and that's or that already will decrease the time complexity. 
okay this was whoa 16 minutes maybe i will cut some thinking parts because i went back and forth for uh, between ideas we'll see thank you a lot for watching see you tomorrow for day three and problem free i'm surprised by the jump of difficulty here yeah, thank you for watching